you on YouTube so coming back today with my next top 10 and today I'm gonna play off of a top 10 I did last week which was the top 10 sleepers to watch the combine and with the combine coming up if it starts tomorrow I'll look back and check that for sure but I wanted to do my top 10 sleepers to watch in the NFL draft so these are guys that I think could have big combines. It uh, for me, I think these are guys that will have big combines. These aren't players to watch at the combine necessarily. I mean, I probably would, but I think these are players that just in the next two months are going to see ex let's say extraordinary rise in their draft stocks. But uh, players that'll see a little bit of rise in their draft stocks and/or actually have big NFL careers. So start with my three outside, and first I've got the defensive tackle out of Mississippi State, Chris Jones. So for me, Chris Jones is a guy that's already seen his uh, draft stock rise a little bit. He's kind of been, I feel like he's been outshined a little bit uh, at the end of the season when you're talking about NFL draft because of Dak Prescott and Deronia Wilson. They were getting a little bit more attention than Chris Jones, but I think um, last month or so he's seen a big rise in his draft stock. He's a good anchor up the middle. He's decent in the pass rush, but overall he's a good anchor in the run game. So my next player on the five out or three outside is a guy that I actually had going in my first round of my last NFL mock draft, and that is Josh Doxson, the wide receiver from TCU. So to me, Doxson's draft stock obviously got hurt when he went down against Oklahoma State this year. Uh, I believe he broke his hand, but he was on pace to, or he, he was leading the country, and I believe it was yards per game and touchdowns before he went down. So. I think this is a guy that will be a very, very good player in the NFL. He's an athletic, fast, good possession receiver as well. You can also hit him deep. Uh, if you don't know much about Josh Docks and you didn't watch him too much, then uh, definitely go watch the beginning half of his 2015 season. So my next one is Jason Spriggs, the defensive or the excuse me offensive tackle from Indiana. This is a guy that's already seen his draft stock rise a little bit, I believe, after the Senior Bowl. But I think it could rise a little bit further. This is a draft that I think will be very offensive tackle heavy. Um, it's a kind of a weaker offensive guard draft. And I think, like I said, I don't see guys like Jack Conklin, Taylor Decker, um, you know, Ronnie Stanley and Laramie, T especially not Ronnie Stanley and Laramie Tunzel making it out of the first round. And I can see Jason Spriggs falling as high as that point. So, moving to my top 10, and at number 10, I've got the safety from Mid-Tennessee State. There's Kevin Bayard. So, I mentioned him before. He's a smaller but more athletic safety. He's a guy that's kind of had the attitude, or has the attitude he's been down his entire life and proved people wrong the entire time. In my draft big boards, or in my safety big board rankings, I had him as a fourth to fifth round pick. This is a guy that will probably end up falling in that falling in that place, but I think this is a guy that could also be a very, very solid safety in the NFL when given the chance. So at number nine, I've got the quarterback out of Michigan State, and that is Connor Cook. So Connor Cook's been a very talked-about quarterback the last few weeks. Uh, a lot of people saying since the shoulders recovered, I believe I saw one quote on ESPN and Bleacher Report that said uh, a lot of GMs think that Connor Cook's got a first-round arm with a third-round attitude, and... I don't know. I don't know the dude personally, so I can't really say. Uh, seeing from what he's done in college, he's obviously a good quarterback. I don't think he's worth the first-round pick uh, just compared to the rest of the quarterbacks that I think will be taken in the first round just overall talent-wise. But I think this is a guy that, if he does slip into the third round, will be a very, very good value pick for some team. So at number eight, I've got the wide receiver out of TCU, Colby Lissenby. So... Obviously, people know that Listen Beast fast. If you watched him at all in college, you understand this guy's got like 4-3 speed. And I don't think that he's become a very household name yet. And I think that if he does run the fastest 40, this is obviously very dependent on his 40 at the NFL Combine. Then I think he could see an extraordinary rise in his draft stock. Kind of like... and Not, ex not exactly like, but kind of like Dre Archer... Uh, Dre Archer was a guy that was expected to go undrafted, ran a 4-3-40. Everyone knew he could do it, but um, saw a little bit of his rise in draft stock after that happened. So at number seven, I've got Hunter Henry, the tight end from Arkansas. So 
Hunter Henry to me is the clear cut best tight end. Again, another guy that I had going in my first round of my last mock draft. I think that he will show his athleticism and cement himself as the best tight end in this draft through the combine. So at number six, I've got the linebacker out of Maryland, and that's Yannick Gaku. I mentioned this on my big board also, not really exactly sure how to pronounce that name. This guy is a very raw and very athletic talent. Um, he's a guy that's a little bit undersized. A linebacker is a little bit of a struggle in the run game, but he's also a very, very good pass rusher. And I think in a draft that's a little bit short of pass rushers, especially fast athletic ones, he'll be able to see a little bit of his rise in his draft stock. He is not a very common name in this draft, though. So at number five, I got the wide receiver out of Pitt, Tyler Boyd. So Boyd was talked about as a first-round pick heading into the 2015 college football season. And I think that the amount of times he was locked down, especially because of the entry to James Conner this year for Pitt, they pretty much everyone knew where um, Chad Voidick was looking when he was passing this year for Pitt, and it was a very one-dimensional offense, and I think that hurt Tyler Boyd a little bit this year. But this is still a guy that's got an extraordinary amount of talent. Uh, he's got good hands. He's fast. He's athletic. The comparison to Larry Fitzgerald was made pretty frequently before the year, but um, I said the entire time I don't think that's a. I don't think he's going to end up being that good in the NFL. I mean, you never know. So at number four, I got the running back out of Louisiana Tech, and that is Kenneth Dixon, a name that's kind of faded out the last week or two. He was talked about a little bit after the Senior Bowl, saw a little bit of a rise in his draft stock. Everyone was saying that you know this might this guy might be able to put up the same type of numbers he did in college that he or in the NFL that he did in college. And I mean, I don't think that's going to be the case. But also, I think this is a guy that has seen or has a lot of experience on pretty much every end of football. He's good blocking back. He's he caught, or he caught quite a bit of balls out of the backfield at Louisiana Tech, and obviously I believe he put up over 5,000 total yards in college. So he's definitely got the ability to uh, be a good runner in the NFL. This is a bigger guy. He's about 5'10", so I think he can handle the, uh, handle the punishment of being an NFL running back as well. So at number three, I've got the safety out of Southern Utah, and that's Miles Killebrew. Killebrew's been talked about a little bit as a sleeper just because he's from a smaller school and he's a little bit big for safety if I'm honest he's about 6'3 and for me he's a guy that is a, I mean he's a hard hitter and he's an athletic guy he's going to be able to cover a lot of the bigger receivers in the NFL and tight ends and I also think he's solid against the run but I think he can also fit in maybe at linebacker. I'm not 100% sure about that, though. Shaq Thompson comparisons have been made before for him. I think this is a guy that, with a big combine, could definitely see a big rise in his draft stock to being maybe a second-round pick. So at number two, I've got the running back out of Arkansas, and that's Alex Collins. So this is one of the more common names on this list. Alex Collins, is a, I mentioned him before. I think this guy's going to be a stud in the NFL. He was a very... Um, not only very serviceable, but a very, very good running back at Arkansas. It took a lot of punishment. Um, I was a mainstay for that team for about three years. And a uh, five, five-star recruit coming out of high school. And I think the talent's still fully there. And I think this guy's game translates very well to the NFL. I don't know why, but for me, the good comparisons for Alex Collins are maybe a little bit on the, well, when he's healthy, Andre Ellington, and then also Steven Jackson, I think is the best one that I could think of. I mean, not right now, but obviously maybe five, six years ago. And then at number one, I've got the defensive tackle out of Baylor, and that's Andrew Billings. So I think Andrew Billings is one of the most athletic defensive tackles in this draft. I think he will cement himself as a first-round pick after the combine, and right now his draft stock is very shaky. It's, he's projected from anywhere from a first to third round pick. I don't think he's going to go in the third round. Might slip into the early second round, but I think that's the lowest he will go. All right, so that concludes my top 10 sleepers for the 2016 NFL Draft. Tomorrow, I pretty much already have my next video planned out. I'm going to continue the theme of NFL Draft since that is that time. It's about that time of year, and tomorrow I will be doing my top 10 players most likely to be the 2017 number one overall pick in the 2017 NFL Draft.
think that could be a fun one. So that's pretty much it. So yeah. If you haven't gone and checked that out yet and you still want to check it out, I'm going to put the link in the description below as well as in the outro. So today I wanted to do, like I said, 2.0, kind of my post-Super Bowl mock draft. And it obviously did change up a little bit. We've had the Senior Bowl since then. Obviously a couple things have changed with...